Hey, good evening, Emerge. I'm sorry I'm not with you in person, but just a, a quick intro to the evening tonight. We're posting a video for you. You're going to see my wife preaching in just a moment. Uh, she sat before some of our leaders today and brought a great word, and so we want to share that with you. Also, a couple of things to remember. Uh, we're going to be using social media a lot to get you information, and so uh, be watching and checking regularly. Uh, this Friday coming at, uh, this Friday morning at 9 a.m., we're going to do a, a live Bible study, and so join us. Uh, you can log in. We'll get the information to you tomorrow. Uh, but we're going to provide Bible study time and some prayer time. Uh, we're also going to do a lot of fun activities throughout the next week uh, just to keep everybody engaged and uh, be expecting phone calls and check-ins from leaders and myself and my wife uh, so that we can see how you're doing. Uh, let us know what we can be praying for. We love you guys. We're proud of you. And uh, I look forward to hearing how this message um, blesses you. Be still and know that I am with you. Be still and know that I am here. Be still and know that I am with you. Be still, be still and know. Hello, Emerge community. I'm super excited to be doing this. A little nervous I'm gonna to be totally completely honest with you we're doing things a little bit differently as you can see we're in my house and we have some of our emerge friends here tonight <laughs> they're here for emotional support and to woot woot and so I can look at them and not try to pretend make eye contact with you because it makes me feel really uncomfortable uh, so we're doing this and I'm thankful that we have this capability just to stay connected with you during this really crazy weird time um, I hope that it is an opportunity for you to get some rest. We've been talking about being still and knowing that He is God. I hope that you're taking advantage of this time to get some rest. But I hope you're also not just using this time to binge on Netflix and waste that time. So I hope you're digging into your word. I hope that you are pressing into worship. I hope that you're connecting with other people through technology, um, staying connected with people and not just so I don't want you to feel isolated. So, speaking of which, binging on Netflix, I wanted to start by just talking about a movie. Has anybody seen the movie Troy? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. Okay. Jimmy just saw Braveheart for the first time last oh night, gosh. so I'm a little concerned. <laughs> Have you seen Troy? No. <laughs> well, it's okay. Actually, I don't condone everything on that movie. In fact, thinking about it now, please don't go and watch that and say I told you to. Uh, there's some inappropriate things. But there is one scene that stands out to me that uh, will always stay with me. It's like, I think it's one of the opening scenes. And there's two giant armies. This is set way back in like ancient Roman times. And um, the main character, his name is Achilles. And he's played by Brad Pitt. Super, this was made a long time ago. He was extra dreamy back then. Don't tell Tyler. Um, he knows. <laughs> and uh, so there's two giant armies and they're standing on the edge of this massive field and they're uh, just having basically a, a yelling battle at first. They're just yelling. <gasps> and they send out their biggest, baddest soldier. And I'm not joking when I say he's the scariest person I've ever seen. He's the biggest person I've ever seen and he's not CGI he's real anyways he comes out and he's big and so he's pumped up his army and he's got like a couple spears and a shield and then this side the, the good guys they're over here and they don't seem worried or intimidated and the king just calls for Achilles and he comes riding in on this horse and he gets down and he's nothing like necessarily out of the ordinary yes he's Brad Pitt so his face is a little out of the ordinary but everything else he's just kind of your average soldier and he he's there he has nothing but a sword and his shield and so he just kind of starts to jog towards this giant man and the giant guy yells and gets the army pumped up again and they chucks a spear and Achilles catches it with his spear shield and he throws it and then he starts picking up speed and he's running a little faster and then the guy throws another spear and then Achilles just like dodges it and now he's like at a full sprint and he's running towards him and the big guy's running towards him and all Achilles does is just jump out to the side and just get out with his sword like right into this guy's traps done and this big guy just he's dead now and now everyone is silent and Achilles walks right up to the enemy army and he said is there no one else is there no one else he looks him right in the eye he's like is there no one else 
And uh, I love that scene. It's just, it pumps me up. And I like that scene because I think about it from the perspective of one of the soldiers on Achilles' side of how they were so confident and they knew that day they were going to win um, because they knew they had this secret weapon. And so we've been reading Psalms 46. I'm trying to calm down. I really love that scene and I talk really fast when I'm excited. Um, we've been reading Psalms 46 this month. Um, and so I, what I want us to do, I'm going to read it, the whole thing again. It's not very long, but I want us, as you're listening, as you guys are listening, to be thinking about it from the perspective of one of those soldiers on that side, on the side of the confident, like, we're totally going to win today. Okay, so here I'm going to read it starting in verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The Lord of Israel is our fortress. Come, see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. So thinking about it from that perspective, that person's perspective, I feel like it changes the whole tone of that scripture. Because now, you know, from that perspective of that soldier, of we're like pumped up, God's amazing, yeah, woo, we're going to totally win. And then he says, be still. And as Tyler talked about, it was either last week or the week before, he describes be still as stop fighting. So to be all pumped and like, God's amazing, God's awesome. And he's saying, be, stop fighting. And know that I am God. Uh, so you can read it like this. Chill out. I've gotten this. You don't have to be afraid. Stop fighting and just know that I am God. And if you go back to verse 1 in this scripture, it says, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea or coronavirus takes over the earth and eats up all the toilet paper and bread. We will not fear those things. <laughs> um, so fear right there, I think it's interesting that it's talked about in the very beginning because fear is one of those things that can alter the outcome of a situation or a battle. And again, fear was probably one of the only defining factors between those two armies that day. This side was confident. They, had, they knew they had this secret weapon. They knew somebody had gone before them and fought this battle and won it for them because right after that, all they had to do was run at them and they were running away scared. This side was terrified. So fear can be the one thing that can alter the outcome of a situation or a battle. Um, and this generation, I did some research just thinking about us, our group. Um, Generation Z is kind of your guys' age group, kind of going into millennials. And um, as far as anxiety and fear, 91% of Generation Z has experienced physical or emotional symptoms caused by stress and anxiety, so fear. Um, Generation Z is also significantly more likely to report mental health problems. And we're talking young, like high school into young adult college <laughs> age. Um, Generation Z... A lot of the stress that's caused is caused by major headline issues, so these big hot topics that are out there right now in the world. And where do we think that the majority of our stress comes from? Where we're getting all these headline issues? Somebody chuck me their phone. This dumb thing, this is what's causing all of this stress and anxiety. We, thank you. We were not made to be intakers of all this constant information, constant downloading of things and puppies over here are suffering, dolphins over there, people in this country, coronavirus here, no toilet paper, grandma, all these things. Just constant, constant, constant. We were literally, our bodies were not 
designed to handle this much information mm -hmm. and we're seeing the results of it because our bodies are now reacting and we're having anxiety attacks and like I said 91% that's almost a hundred percent that's not far from a hundred percent of a generation that is experiencing physical or emotional symptoms caused by stress fear and anxiety and um, those things, stress, fear, that causes, it causes a perspective shift on how we approach our everyday battles. And then we start to fight the wrong way. And so that's what I want to get into today is how, the, how we're fighting. And one of the ways that we're fighting incorrectly is we're fighting against God. Um, fear and anxiety fights against God. Uh, 2 Timothy 1.7, it says that God has not given you a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. But he has given you power, love, and a sound mind. So fear yeah. is not from God, right? Mm -hmm. Fear didn't come from him. Um, and so that's like a way that we're kind of fighting against him. Uh, 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all of your cares upon him, for he cares for you. I know I just put in a bookmark right there. Yeah, 1 Peter 5, 7. It says, another translation says, Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares for you. Um, but right before that, the scripture right before it, it says, Humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time he will lift you up in honor. And then it goes into give all your worries and cares to him, for he cares about you. I think sometimes that we're, we're the ones holding on to our worries and our stresses. Like our pride is holding on to those mm -hmm. things. Like we don't trust God enough to let him have those things mm -hmm. so is pride keeping you from completely <clears throat> trusting him even with your biggest fears and worries i'll be completely transparent a couple years ago about two and a half years ago now we were entering into a new season i was still you know a relatively new mom of two um while being in full-time ministry while launching a new ministry um being a wife to a very busy man um still leading worship it was just a very busy season and, um, and it was, yeah, it was a hard season. I didn't have a lot of people that I could verbally process things with. Being in leadership, sometimes it can be a lonely place. And just not feeling like there were many people that I could unload to. And uh, in this season, there was one particular, really, there was only one person in this season that occasionally would look me in the eye and say, how are you doing? And in those moments, I would just cry, which then would make me mad because I hate crying. <laughs> and so then I told myself, okay, that has happened one too many times. Just buck up, little buckaroo, put your big girl pants on and just deal with this. And I just remember, I'm like, okay. And these were my thoughts. Like, God created me for this season. I can do this. I can handle it. And I felt like I was a, a, a high capacity person. So I just kept letting things build and build and build and build without dealing with it and uh, I remember one morning I woke up I was having some difficulty breathing the next day it was even harder and I went through a two-month period where I couldn't get a full breath and I felt like I was drowning <laughs> and uh, it got so bad like I was getting such lack of oxygen I would forget to show up to work I forgot to pick up Jonah from TK uh, there was it was a rough little season and I went to doctors to get inhalers, anything to help. And then it turns out I was having like a two month long anxiety attack. And I don't consider myself a fearful person or an anxious person, but it was just the, the constant build up, the building, the building, the building, and never giving that away to anyone. And I, I had a physical reaction to it. And so uh, through that, I mean, I remember through those times that really in worship, in times of worship, I felt relief and I felt like I could breathe. But then it was like right afterwards, it just came back, that heavy weight. And it wasn't until Tyler's parents actually came down one weekend and they just prayed over me. And Tyler's dad gave me this dad hug and I just like finally cried. And um, he just like prayed over me for a good 10 minutes and just like held me, which is apparently what I needed. And after that, I really didn't struggle with it. But um I was just allowing fear and anxiousness and just this buildup of, of, I can handle it, uh, create anxiety inside of me. And what was happening is that I was 
I wasn't tr like I love the Lord and I trust him and I read his word and I, I believe in every word he says, but yet my pride wasn't allowing myself to fully give him all these weights that I was carrying. And what that is, fear and anxiety is really just misguided faith. Mm -hmm. And where with faith and anxiety or what fear and anxiety leads to is a, is a mistrust in God. And if you're not trusting him, then you're not following him. And if you're not following anything, then you're you're starting to make decisions completely on your own. And that's kind of what I was doing, not on purpose, but I was really, I was just saying, God created me for this. I can do it. I can handle it without saying, God, I'm going to welcome you into this with me and help me walk through this. And so that leads me to my next point of where we're just making decisions on our own. And number two, if you're taking notes, is sometimes we fight without God, just completely without him. Are you fighting without him during this crazy time? It's a weird time, and I hope that you're inviting him into this situation. Um, when we fight without him, we start to lose hope. Mm -hmm. And then if we start to lose hope, then that fear and anxiety mm -hmm. does take over and we become restless. And restless is a dangerous place to be because then we're going to start looking for answers from all these different places. And uh, when we begin to start doing that, taking advice from over here, taking advice from over here, believing everything that's coming in over here on our phones, on the TV, on the news, then we're going to begin to start believing lies, things that aren't true, mm -hmm. things that are unpure. Yeah. And now we're getting advice from the world. And again, our perspective is being shifted. And we're going to start heading into battles without a plan and without any confidence. Mm -hmm. um, it talk, in the Bible, it talks about how it talks a lot about our mind and protecting our mind. And uh, Paul in Philippians 4.8 Let's turn to that real quick. I have it bookmarked. Philippians 4, 8. Okay, so I'm going to start in verse 8. It says, Now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you have learned and received from me, everything you have heard from me and saw me doing, and then the God of peace will be with you. So I want you to catch that last line. Do all these things and then the God of peace will be with you. Mm -hmm. So if you are noticing that you have been having like this battle of the mind and you feel like you've been making decisions without him, could it be that maybe we're just thinking on the wrong things? Mm -hmm. And we're thinking about all the negative that we've been taking in from all these different angles when God is saying, fix your thoughts on what is true, lovely, pure, excellent, and then the God of peace will be with you. Right. And I know that during that time, I wasn't like rebelling against the Lord, but I was, I was focused on my kids. I'm, uh, I'm so stressed. I got to keep them, you know, in the word or all these kids in our ministry, just focusing on them and, and their problems, not necessarily like, what can I do? I'm nobody, but just taking on the weights and the cares of all these people and thinking about how can I do this? How can I help? Um, when really, if I'm thinking about what is true, that God loves them more than I do, what is lovely, what is pure, what is honorable, um, what is worthy of praise, and then the God of peace can be with us. Um, and that's who I want on my side, and mm -hmm. I hope that's who you want on your side is the God of peace to be on our side. The same God that like shreds spears and like breaks mountains. I want that God to be on my side and I want to be fighting alongside of him. And that's, that takes me into point number three. Uh, we talked about how we make the mistake of fighting against God. I talked about how we make the mistake of just fighting without him and we start making decisions when he might have turned left way back where we're up here, we're going to turn right. And we started to make decisions without him and fight without him. And then lastly, what we need to do is to uh, fight alongside him. Um, do we fight alongside him? So listen to this. And if you're taking notes, write this down. Where fear and anxiety fight against God, prayer and worship fight alongside him. That's good. 
um, a couple scriptures before the one that I just read, where I'm talking about fixing your thoughts on him. In Philippians again, Philippians 4, 6, it says, Be anxious about nothing, but in everything, in prayer and supplication. In my, my version, it says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Mm -hmm. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. So did you hear that? Like, His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, peace... Peace isn't the absence of problems, but it is knowing who you are and who you're walking with through them. Mm -hmm. So when <clears throat> we're saying this, like there are some action plans. Yes, we know that. Um, well, let me say it this way. Back to where he says, cast your fears on me. That's an action. It's not God's not saying I'm just going to take all your cares. Mm -hmm. We need to do the casting or do the throwing of our cares. And I think that's really what I had to learn through that season a couple of years ago was I'm carrying all these things. And even though I might be walking out, even in a season of what looks like victory, I was still um, carrying a lot of weights and a lot of burdens. And the whole time he was saying, cast your cares on me because I care about you. And so... Like I said, peace isn't the absence of problems. It's just knowing who you are and who's walking with you in the midst of them. And life will never be absent of problems or battles. But again, knowing who we are and whose we are, it really gives us the advantage. Um, there is one thing I want us to look up. Next scripture is Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28. And I'm going to close with this. Okay, so Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. Talking about walking alongside him, okay? Then Jesus said, Come to me, all who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. So let me explain what a yoke is. It's not just an egg, the gross part of the egg. <laughs> Depending on how you cook it. Sorry, Chris. I bet you can make an egg yolk taste real good. Um, a yolk, is, a long time ago, uh, it was a farming tool, and they would put this yolk over two ox in, oxen, <laughs> oxes, oxen. And what they would do is it would help them to pull heavy weights. And what it would do is it would distribute the weight evenly between the two of them. So if there was a really big ox that was really, really strong, partnered with a smaller ox that wasn't as strong and was a little bit more weaker, this yoke would distribute the weight evenly so that there wouldn't be too much burden or weight on the smaller, weaker ox. And the bigger one can shoulder more of the, the burden. So you can see where I'm going with that. So Jesus is saying, I want to give you my yoke. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I'm humble and blah, blah, blah. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. And so he's saying, let me shoulder more of this burden. Cast your cares on me. Let me shoulder the heavy burdens so that we can do this thing together. That is good. And just the other day, I heard a, a, a woman preacher say, any task that God has called you to, if he's called you to do a task, he's going to shoulder the responsibility for it. And so that takes so much weight off of us. If God has called you to do something, if he's called you to reach your family, if he's called you to be whatever a, a, a missionary in your workplace, if he's called you to do X, Y, and Z, he's going to shoulder the responsibility for it. And I had lost sight of that. God has called me to be a mom. He's called me to be a pastor. He's called me to be a leader, a worship leader. And he's going to shoulder the responsibility for that. But I have to take that action of casting my cares on him yeah. and giving him my burdens. Another version where it says cast your fears, it means throw, just throw them. Because that's, he died on the cross to take those things away from us. And I feel like if we don't do that and we don't give it to him, it's, it's like spitting in his face. And um, he loves you. And he wants to take those things from you. 
and he wants to shoulder the weight. Um, so I would just ask you today, what are you fighting? How are you fighting? Are you fighting against him? Are you, uh, are you fighting without him? That's a scary place to be. Or are you inviting him into your everyday battles and saying, God, I want you to walk this thing out with me? Yeah. Because um, he, that's what he did all of this for. Um, remember that opening scene of Troy and just being that soldier on the winning side, knowing that you guys, that you are about to win this battle. And that's what God has called us to. He says, I am your strength. I am your refuge. You do not have to be afraid because I've already gone out there and I've already won this war. And I'm inviting you to wear this yoke with me so that we can walk through this season together. And I'm going to shoulder the heavy burdens. Put your burdens on me. Let me take those from you so that you can do what I've called you to do. So I just want to invite you, you know, wherever you are, cast your cares on him. If this is a fearful time for you, you know what? You have a God in heaven who's like, I'm your strength. I'm your place of refuge. I'm your place of peace. Talk to me. Come and be with me. Draw near to me. Over the next couple of days, we're going to try and offer you some resources like some worship playlists that you can turn on in your bedroom that a couple of our team members have created just so that you can invite the Holy Spirit into your room and invite him into this weird, scary season. It doesn't have to be weird and scary. Let's stay connected. God is right there next to you saying, cast those cares on me. Any fears you have at all, I want to walk this out with you. So let me pray and then we'll be all done. All right, Lord. I just thank you so much for this opportunity to learn about your peace, Lord, to learn about your grace, and to just remember that peace doesn't always come without the absence of storms and struggles, but Lord, that you've called us to, to walk with you across those waves, and Lord, that you've put this, you've invited us into a place where you want to take those burdens off of us and walk through this season, walk through this battleground with you. And um, I just thank you that we can do that with, with grace and with peace, Lord. So, Father, wherever everybody is, I just ask that you would um, just be peace right now. Holy Spirit, just fill up their homes, Lord. I just thank you for a, a sweet sense of peace. I thank you that this is an opportunity. Help us to see this time as an opportunity to not only draw closer to you, but also closer to each other. Um, and I just thank you, Lord, for just help this to be done quickly. Uh, keep everybody safe. I just speak grace over all of our bodies, Lord. Keep us safe so that we don't catch anything weird. And um, multiply the toilet paper. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. <laughs> okay, stay tuned. We have some other things that we're going to be sending your way, some other resources and other ways that you can stay connected. Okay, we love you. Bye.